Thousands of world cycles may arise and cease in the infinite consciousness, yet they are non-different from the infinite consciousness, even as waves are non-different from the ocean. This consciousness, this awareness, the attention by which you're listening to this video is infinitely powerful. It waves, it comes and goes, it manifests in infinite variety. I am not a wave, I am the ocean. When thus the truth is realized, the waveness ceases. Waveness has to be understood here as identification with the wave. Consciousness doesn't stop doing what it's doing. But consciousness can realize its own nature. This is what we call liberation. This can be practiced. And when this is realized, there's stillness. There's a realization that nothing is happening. Absolutely nothing is happening. The world appearance is like the wave in relation to Brahman, which is the ocean. The existence and the non-existence of this world appearance are the two ways in which the energy inherent in Brahman manifests. Existence and non-existence, life and death, sleep and wakefulness, consciousness and unconsciousness. It's coming and going, it's like the peaks and the troughs of the wave. The experience that arises in consciousness, as in a dream, is known as mind, Brahma the creator, the grandfather of all creation. So here, here Brahma is called the grandfather. I don't know why he should be called the grandfather and not just the father, but perhaps Brahma is associated with the original notions which give rise to further notions. This being is nameless, formless and immutable. Well, he's got a name, Brahma, and he's often given a form. And he's not immutable because at the end of the world cycle, Brahma gets enlightened. So I don't think these epithets are describing Brahma here. But perhaps when you start looking into the nature of Brahma, this is what you find, that Brahma is nameless, formless and immutable. But that's pointing beyond Brahma. In that, the notions of I and you, etc. arise. These are the primordial notions which give rise to all sorts of other notions. These are the father notions, if you like. Even they are non-different from the Creator. The pure consciousness in which all these notions arise is the great-grandfather of all creatures. So we've got the great-grandfather. Just as the waves which rise and fall on the ocean are only the ocean and non-different from it, all these creations and dissolutions are non-different from the infinite consciousness. So there seems to be a little bit of confusion here between Brahma and Brahman. It doesn't really matter what we think of Brahma. What we want to do is realize the nature of Brahman. Realize the infinite nature of our own consciousness and what goes on within it. The movement of energy that occurs in the infinite consciousness is known as the cosmic person who is endowed with a magnetic field and a gravitational force. One wonders what the Sanskrit for magnetic field and, gra and gravitational force is. I think the translator might be taking some liberties here. But what is it about magnetism and gravity? The forces of attraction and repulsion these are the basic underlying factors of this particular mode of consciousness. We experience limitation to movement. We experience resistance. And this is gravitation. 
we're not flying through the air. This is part of this mode of consciousness which we're in. It's a very solidified aspect of consciousness. And there's magnetism. There's certain things which arise within the field of experiencing which consciousness focuses on, which the attention focuses on. And whatever the attention focuses on, that constitutes the reality. So why should the attention focus on one thing rather than another? And this is where the magnetism comes in. There's attraction to certain aspects of the experiencing or repulsion from aspects of experiencing. And this builds up our reality. This along with resistance and a certain solidification represented by gravity. In our dreams, gravity doesn't seem to have such effect. This is simply another mode of consciousness which is less material. And there are even less material modes of consciousness than, than dream. Why do we have a body in a dream? Why do we walk on the ground in a dream? We don't need to have a body in a dream. We don't need to be walking on the ground in a dream. You might be walking off the ground on occasion. Perhaps you have a lot of flying dreams. But there still seems to be this tendency to materialization, doesn't there? And that is another mode of the infinite consciousness. And there are modes of consciousness where we don't have bodies, where we don't even have space and time. So this is just one particular solidification one particular mode which is characterized here by mag magnetism and gravity. This creation arises in him like a dream. Creation is a dream. The waking state is a dream. Even though this creation or world appearance is apparently seen and experienced, it is in reality the realization of the notions that arise in us, and they alone exist as the cosmic personality. It's our essential personality. Consciousness itself experiences the notions that arise in it again and again. It is that cosmic person who is pervaded and permeated by consciousness that appears as all the dream objects. Just as an actor who dreams that he is acting sees himself acting on a stage, entertaining an audience, this consciousness becomes aware of its own experience of this world appearance. And when it does, we get conventional reality. But this cosmic personality is us. It's the fundamental structure which gives rise to our conventional notions of reality.